Hello everyone and welcome to our Cargill Confectionery Series. My name is Coco Joe and the topic for this video is caramel. We'll talk about melting caramel and the specific temperatures that you'll want to use depending on your application. We'll demonstrate making two very popular caramel confections, how you would form sea salt caramels and also making caramel clusters. So let's dive into it. Some people prefer to cook their own caramel and that is great to do. It is a complicated process and there are plenty of ready-made caramel options for you to use. So in this demonstration, we will be working with our Peter's Caramel, which is one, one of many options that are available. It comes in a five pound loaf and it really is a delicious caramel. I use the word caramel and a lot of people will say caramel and it means the same thing. Um, I was told once by someone that if you pronounce it caramel, as I now do, it sounds fancier and you can charge more for it, so I go with that, but it can be pronounced either way. So to melt the caramel, you can use either a plastic microwave safe bowl or a glass bowl or, or container in a microwave. You can also use a water jacketed container or a kettle to melt the caramel. It will burn, uh, so you do have to be careful if it's touching temperatures above 200 degrees, you have to melt it gently. So I do find that the microwave is an excellent way to melt caramel. Uh, if you're gonna use something that's water jacketed, just let it sit for a long period of time and you'll have also great melting results. I'm gonna melt half of this loaf. This is a five pound loaf, so I'll be melting two and a half pounds. And you don't even need to chop it up in the microwave, which is the method that I'm gonna use. It really helps to have the carousel in the microwave so you avoid hot spots. And I'm just gonna melt it on high for one minute at a time. So you can see we've started to melt a little bit. I am gonna stir in between each of the one minute intervals, but we have a bit of a ways to go. So one more minute. We've made some good progress. No signs of burning and the caramel is softening. I'll use my infrared just to get an idea of where we're at in temperature. We're at about 120 degrees, give or take. One more minute. So for this first application, I want to make sea salt caramels. So I want to spread the caramel into a form about a half an inch tall. That'll be the height of my sea salt caramels. So I really just need to melt the caramel enough so it can spread into my form. And the temperature here is in the range of 160 to 170 degrees. So that's plenty warm for that. So for this application and actually the cluster application as well, you'll want to be sure to source a caramel that's firm enough to hold its shape at room temperature. You can see that the caramel loaf is holding its shape. So when this comes back to room temperature and I cut my sea salt caramels, I don't want them to deform or uh, slump before I can cover them with chocolate. So I'll just put down a piece of parchment paper and I have these forming bars which are handy because they can be adjusted to the size of my slab. And I'm simply just gonna pour the caramel out. and I want to keep it 
right at the height of the bars. So when this comes back to room temperature, it will be ready to cut. It will release from the parchment paper and I can go to the next step of making my sea salt caramels. Our caramel that we poured out into our form is now solidified and it's ready to be cut and dipped. An optional step that is really helpful is to pre-bottom one side of the caramel. If you are enrobing and you don't have a pre-bottomer in your enrober, this will really help your enrobing to be sure you get a good bottom. Even if you're dipping with the fork or with your hand, it still helps to have a, a thin chocolate bottom on the pieces that you're dipping. First, we have to remove the bars. I'll just cut away in between the caramel and the bars. I have tempered dark chocolate and we'll be dipping these in dark chocolate. So I'm just going to apply a very thin layer of chocolate over this slab. It doesn't have to be perfectly neat and it doesn't have to be fully covered. You just want a nice thin starting layer of chocolate knowing that whether you dip it or enrobe it, you'll have a second layer of chocolate on the bottom. Once this chocolate solidifies, we'll be ready to cut them into pieces and enrobe them. Our pre-bottom is solidified, so we are ready to cut. I would like the chocolate side down, so I'll flip my slab over. There are a few ways you can cut caramel. Uh, there are manufacturers of large roller cutters which would be strong enough to cut and you would cut in either direction. You can get spacers in between to space the wheels to cut the size that you'd like. Or you can just cut with a chef's knife, which is what I'm going to do. I'm gonna use this pastry roller to score this so I can get roughly one inch by one inch squares. Once I enroll those in chocolate, they'll fit in my box very well. So I'm really not cutting all the way through, I'm just scoring. And now I can begin to cut my rows. I have my tempered dark chocolate and some sea salt to make finished sea salt caramels. And of course you'll want to sprinkle the sea salt while the caramel, the chocolate on the caramel is still wet. So it'll adhere. I'll just do a nice di diagonal design across. Of course, since you have a, I'm using a dipping fork, you could also make a mark before you do your salt. So for example, a ripple, and then still add the sea salt. You could design it however you would like. A couple of tips on the hand dipping. Tapping on the bowl will shake off the excess chocolate and wiping against the edge of the tray will be sure that you don't get a puddle on the bottom of your piece. There are many types of sea salt available and many sizes of piece, so you could have larger particles or smaller particles. Uh, pink Himalayan sea salt is a favorite. There are many. Uh, so you can have a variety of sea salt caramels. Next, we'll demonstrate how to make pecan caramel clusters, a very popular confection. I have a tray of salted roasted pecans, but these clusters can be made with anything, any other nut, pretzel balls, any things you would like to put in a tray can be clustered together with caramel. 
So I have the Peter's Caramel melted to 160 to 180 degrees Fahrenheit is a great range for this. We're gonna use this confectionery funnel to do our depositing. And since the caramel is hot, I'm gonna wear a glove, the glove that I hold the funnel with to be safe and keep my hand from the hot caramel. So the way this funnel works, it's really a wonderful tool. I fill it pretty full with caramel because it flows out better if you're making full trays of these at a time. So I've got it about three quarters of the way up. And before I start the depositing, I'll just demonstrate how it works. The stick is your tool to control the flow. So when you pick the stick up, the caramel starts to flow. And when you push the stick down, you stop the flow and you can move to the next position. So simply moving from place to place, making a nice dollop of caramel. You can control the amount of caramel that comes out by the distance that you pick up the stick. So if you wanna make a smaller cluster, you just pick the stick up, not as much. I'll demonstrate that on this next row, if I wanna make small ones. Once you fill a tray, it may take one to two hours to cool so that you can remove these from the tray, separate them, and then dip them in chocolate or enrobe them. And that'll depend on the temperature of your room. I will show you one more trick. I like to make a cluster that is tall. So I might wait a bit longer for this caramel to start to firm up, and then I'll put a second deposit over the first one. So I end up with more caramel in roughly the same amount of space. Our caramel clusters have solidified, so we're ready to separate them out, remove them from the tray. Um, ones that maybe have touched the side might stick a little bit, so you may just have to pry them away. But as you can see now, we have all these beautiful caramel clusters that are ready to be perhaps fork dipped like we did with the sea salt caramels, or they could be run through an enrober. I'll show you some of the smaller size ones that we, we did where our deposit of caramel was not as large. This is an example of a piece that has a very uh, uneven bottom. And so it's suggested that you pre-bottom these on an enrober that has a pre-bottomer for the best results. If you're fork dipping them, you'll get a beautiful bottom with just one dip. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out more videos in our Cargill Confectionery series. I'm Coco Joe. Have a sweet day.